Hello, my name is Jan Prote. I'm working as application chemist in the chromatography team here in Plavi at Büchi Labortechnik headquarters. Before I started at Büchi, I studied applied chemistry in Germany. I did my PhD in silica chemistry at the University of Tübingen. And as you know, silica is the main component of the stationary phase used in liquid chromatography. Today, I'm happy to share my experience with you to simplify your world of chromatography. Everyone is happy when their chromatogram showed nicely formed peaks. But as you know, deformed peak shapes turn up as well and bad peak shapes can be a pain. So let's go to the meeting room after the coffee break and discuss the theory about peak shapes and some practical solutions. Before we talk about painful peak shapes, let's see which peaks brings a smile to our face. Look, this peak shape is what we want because this peak is symmetrical and sharp. In theory, idle peak shapes can be described with the following equation, the Gaussian distribution function, with some changes in the variance. This idle peak shape has a variance of 0.2. Another example with a high variance, for example, 5, has this peak shape. But let's be honest, this is too much, right? Let's have a deeper look now into the peak width and the difference between analytical HPLC and preparative chromatography. In case of analytical HPLC, only a few microliter are injected, whereas in preparative chromatography, you inject as much as possible sandal. Look, this is a typical example of an analytical HPLC chromatogram. You have narrow peak width. But what happens if you inject a high sample volume like this blue solution? We get white peak shapes. But as you can see, the peaks are still separated. In this case, we are able to collect both fractions with the fraction collector separately. The peak shape besides the peak width is also very important. When you work with preparative chromatography, you want to purify as much as possible sample. The peak shape plays a decisive role because it has a high effect on the purity of the collected sample. So obviously we are interested in idle peak shapes. But what do bad peak shapes actually look like? As you can see, the peak number one and peak number two overlap and they are not separated. But why is this bad? Both peaks cannot be fractionated separately and we are not able to purify our sample. Why do we get these peak shapes? In case of abnormal peaks, the sample does not flow homogeneously through the column or cartridge. This can be caused by the sample, the solvent, the equipment, or column or cartridge. Now we know that abnormal peak shapes exist, but we distinguish between three types, peak ta fronting, peak tailing, and peak splitting. First, let's define how these peak types look like. We'll start with peak tailing. Peak tailing occurs when the second half of your peak is much more wider than the first half. The opposite of peak tailing is peak fronting. Look. Here, the first half of the peak is 
wider than the second half. Finally, let's define peak splitting. Peak splitting occurs when one peak is split into two peaks. As you can see, it is super easy to determine which peak shapes occurs, but we can also calculate our peak shapes. This is important, for example, if you want to quantify your sample. Bad peak shapes can lead to incorrect results. There are two ways to calculate the peak shapes, the asymmetry factor and the tailing factor. Let's start with the asymmetry factor. The asymmetry factor is measured at 10% peak height above the baseline and is calculated with the following equation. B divided by A. The tailing factor is measured at 5% peak height and is calculated with the following equation. A plus B divided by 2 times A. If the asymmetry factor or tailing factor takes the value 1, we are happy because we have symmetrical peaks. A value higher than 1 defines peak tailing, whereas a value less than 1 defines peak fronting. In this case, we are not happy because we have not symmetrical peaks. But enough theory. Let's go to the laboratory where it gives you an overview about typical causes and suggestions and how to solve peak deformation. Now, let's start with the most common phenomenon, peak tailing. First, secondary interactions. Ionized selenol molecules in a suctionary phase can interact intensively with some molecules, for example with amino groups. As a result, not all molecules pass through the column with the same speed. This causes peak tailing. Another effect is that volume. It leads to the diffusion of your dissolved molecules and cause peak tailing. Third, column overload. If you overload your column or cartridge, some molecules in a mobile phase move faster through the column and cause peak tailing. And last but not least, sample solvent. If your sample is not completely soluble, soluble in the initial conditions of your mobile phase, your peak may run out because it migrates not evenly through the column. So, summarized, first, optimize the pH of your mobile phase with buffers. You have to protonate the synalol groups. Second, avoid dead volume. Third, do not overload your column. And last but not least, make sure that your sample is fully soluble in the mobile phase. Let's continue with peak fronting and again column overload. But in this case you exceeded the sample capacity of your stationary phase. Another effect is packing bed deformation. If there are channel or cracks in your column or cartridge this may be the cause of peak fronting and summarized again do not overload your column or cartridge, reduce the injection volume of your sample or reduce the sample concentration of your sample solution. And regarding to packing bed deformation, filtrate your sample, use clean solvents or reduce the flow rate to decrease the pressure to avoid peak fronting. Finally, 
I will go into more detail about peak splitting. If peak splitting occurs, it's important to check if only one peak is affected by peak splitting or if all peaks are affected by peak splitting. If only one peak shows peak splitting, it is most likely a problem with the chemistry. To solve that, you can change the mobile phase or use a different stationary phase. However, often all peaks are affected by peak splitting. In this case, the problem is related to the column. For example, presence of a void at the inlet or if you have channels in the packing bed or also clogged inlets, fritz, cause peak splitting of every peak. In this case, try out a new cartridge or filtrate your sample. Since my PhD, I'm fascinated by silica and I'm happy I can now share my experience here at Büchi with the worldwide users of Flash and PrEP HPLC. Did you know that silica is also found in stone, soil and sand? Who would have thought that this material would ever play such an important role in any chemistry and pharma lab? I hope I was able to give you today a good insight into peak shape and peak width. In case of any help for your separation, please contact us at application at Bye-bye. See you soon.